Uh, so, uh, thank you for coming to today's uh, second JQ webinar. Uh, my name is Fuse uh, from QTEC, and I'll be a um, moderator of today's webinar. Uh, today, uh, we are going to uh, introduce uh, Japanese new uh, CubeSat launching system JQ. And uh, yeah, uh, first of all, uh, Professor Cho from QTEC will uh, present overview of JQ system. Uh, Professor Cho, uh, please start. Okay, uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, so good morning and uh, uh, good afternoon uh, to those who are from the uh, uh, Western part of the, uh, uh, the group. Okay, so this is a general overview of how to collaborate with the Japanese university or the uh, basically uh, introduction of JQ. So uh, because uh, we uh, we have five speakers today, uh, the from QTEC, uh, uh, two speakers, but we, we are going to be short. And uh, from QTEC side, we already did a, a presentation in April and uh, recording is available uh, in the UNICEF website. Uh, so later I'll put the, uh, I'll put those uh, uh, address so uh, you can build the detail. Okay, I'll just go to the briefly. Okay, uh, so JCube, uh, JCube uh, should not be confused with KiboCube. I think many of you uh, know KiboCube already. Uh, KiboCube uh, is a JAXA UN USA uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, they uh, released one YouCube set uh, from ISS for free. And uh, JCube is a JAXA and UNICEF uh, opportunities. Okay, uh, both uh, JAXA is involved, but uh, uh, Keyboard Cube is for free, JCube is not for free. But why then, uh, why do we uh, do we have to go for the uh, JCube if it's not for free? Because it has advantage. So uh, difference uh, is a, uh, Launch price, uh, JCube, uh, is not free, but much lower than the market price. Uh, approximately, I think, one third uh, of the market price. And size, uh, you can go up to 3U. Uh, so uh, you can do something more sophisticated. So it, uh, Cubo Cube usually focus on the first, uh, for the first satellite of the country. But uh, JCube uh, is not really limited to that one. So second satellite or third satellite uh, can be uh, and it can be launched through JCube as long as it is related to the uh, capacity building's purpose. And also, uh, one condition is uh, you have to team up with the Japanese universities. That's why uh, we are going to introduce uh, four universities today, uh, including QTEC, for, uh, to show the opportunities of how to work with the Japanese university. So uh, this is JSO, so, uh, so, uh, satellite will, will be released from this one. And uh, this is a typical flow for the uh, foreign partners to work with the, uh, to work with uh, QTEC, uh, no, no, to, <laughs> to work with Japanese universities. So this is based on our ex past experience at the QTEC. So uh, typically we have first contact and the meetings and the many remote meetings exchange of emails and the statement of work define what to do in the collaboration and the responsibility of each party. And contract is signed and the money is transferred. Uh, this is very important. Without money, I think Japanese university cannot uh, go forward. And actual work and student may come to Japan uh, and uh, also satellite launch and operations and the discussion on the next collaboration projects. So this is how we, uh, collaborate with uh, foreign universities or uh, foreign entities uh, typically. So, and uh, important point is that uh, in-person meetings are very important to know each other. So uh, I suggest to utilize conference such as UNICEF Globals or IHCs uh, where the both uh, party can attend. But of course, uh, the we should do uh, remote meetings, many remote meetings, many exchange of emails, but uh, in-person meetings can solve uh, many things uh, at one time. 
for uh, ideally suggest uh, to have in-person meetings. And the clear definition of responsibility in SOW so that uh, to have a uh, smooth relationships. And, uh, and uh, be careful about the money transfers, especially this, because this is uh, across the border. So there are many dramas. Uh, we, we had uh, the, at the QTEC, we had uh, more than 10 uh, contracts, uh, nearly, I think nearly 20. So every time we have dramas, yes. So, uh, so also, it's not just one time or put, uh, one time co uh, cooperations. So try to continue the collaboration even after the project. So uh, try to have a long term relationship. So exchange of student uh, and also joint researches and so also expand other than the space field. So that, that may be uh, good. Okay. And uh, yes, this is my uh, last one. For so things to be noted uh, is that as money transfer occurs in JCube, okay, the contract between foreign entity and Japanese university is really must. You have to find a contract because money is involved. And the contract is legally binding. So you need assistance from the legal sections of your organizations. For so Japanese universities, uh, uh, UNICEF would assist. Okay, uh, the, about how to make a contract, yes. And uh, the UNICEF, UNICEF already had some standard uh, contract template. So the point in the contract are the specified non-military use. I think many, almost all the Japanese universities require this one. So uh, technologies used in this contract is a non-military use. And uh, country who owns a satellite must register to the United Nations. This is required by Japanese law. Japanese space law requires that the satellite is registered. And uh, if uh, it's not specified, I think JAXA won't accept uh, the, uh, the uh, application. Okay. And export controls, uh, this is another again the law and uh, payment due and the payment currencies. It is, uh, typically it is in N, yes. So, uh, yes, uh, right now, N is very weak. So if you want to use a JCube, I think it's a time. Yes, <laughs> it's a very good time uh, to use a Japanese service. Okay, I think that's it, yes. So I, I'll put the uh, those uh, address uh, of my recordings in an April webinar. So uh, there, there are more details in, in, in there, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Cho. Uh, okay, if you have uh, any question, uh, we can receive now a few. Uh, please write a question in the chat box or please raise the hand button. Uh, if not, uh, we will move to uh, uh, next presentation. Of course, we will uh, ask a question. I uh, will do a question Q and A session at the end of the this webinar. Okay, thank you, Professor Cho. Uh, ah, well, ah, well, here's us one question. Well, I think uh, the uh, they are. Uh, of course, the one is a launch money because we have to pay to the uh, we have to pay to the uh, JAXA. Another one, uh, the Japanese university must represent uh, those uh, foreign entity for the safety review things, and then there will be lots of the uh, uh, personal fees involved, and uh, also uh, that 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 is not really easy one. So so uh, at the QTEC we usually charge for that one. And also, uh, if you ask uh, for the testings and uh, also integration, final integration in Japanese universities, and if you require some, uh, if uh, that requires some fees, I think that will be added. Yes. So uh, not only just for the launch. Yes. Uh, other expenses will be uh, added. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have a question? If not, uh, let's move to the next session. Okay, uh, next session is uh, about uh, QTEC uh, 
test of facilities and uh, resources uh, presented by Dr. Joseph Osso. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Okay, please uh, go ahead. Thank you, Fusi Sensei. Good morning, everyone. And good day to you, wherever you are. I'd like to go ahead and share my screen. Um, just a moment. Uh, can you see my screen? Oh, okay, now, yes. Okay, so, um, so I'd like to talk about the, um, what kind of uh, capabilities we have at the Center for Nano Satellite Testing, which belongs to um, QTech. So um, basically, um, our main philosophy is to, just a moment, is to maintain the right balance between um, cost, delivery time, and um, reliability. And in view of that, the kind of services we offer includes um, thermal testing, um, outgas um, testing and mechanical test as well, which includes some um, vibration and shock. And then we also have um, electromagnetic com compatibility and antenna pattern tests. And then we also, even though we don't have um, a radiation source, um, we can coordinate um, TID tests for your um, radiative testing. Yeah, so. Um, why do we test? I think everybody knows why we test. I think the two basic um, um, things are for verification and then also for um, validation. So I'd like to go ahead and talk about the, um, again, just as um, Professor Cho said, I also did the first um, uh, seminar presentation. So you'll find um, detailed information in that presentation as well. So I'll just quickly skip through. So I would like to talk about um, um, thermal vacuum um, testing facility that we have. So basically um, in thermal vacuum testing, you wanna be sure that um, your satellite or your subsystem component will be able to survive the harsh environment within space. And um, sometimes um, your launch service provider might, might define certain limitations for you or certain testing criteria. And then also, um, they might also specify um, certain testing regimes. So here at um, QTech, um, our biggest uh, chamber is 1,700 by 1,700 uh, millimeter um, chamber. And this uh, chamber is equipped with a shroud. And um, basically, we can test up to um, 50 kg and up to 50 cm size um, spacecraft. But sometimes we go beyond that. But for good, if you want to do, um, if you want to have um, some data for your thermal modeling and analysis, uh, aspect ratio is important. So we usually uh, would like to um, do that with um, up to 50 kg. But if you don't care about thermal modeling and things like that, yeah, we can, sometimes we test much bigger sizes than that. So our, um, our big chamber is equipped with um, a scroll pump. And then also we have a turbo pump that is capable of up to um, pumping speed of 3,300 for nitrogen and 2,400 for hydrogen. And then we also have a cryo pump and um, um, both pumps are able to deliver the ultimate vacuum pressure that you would require for your subsystem or for your entire satellite. Okay, and then uh, we, we also have a small um, thermal vacuum chamber. Yeah, so it's also equipped with, um, it's not equipped with a dry pump, but a rotary pump. And then um, it also has its own um, turbo pump and equipped with a shroud. So basically, the principles of operation is the same. There isn't any much difference, just that this can take a much bigger um, capacity. And sometimes um, we have users who come and who do not really know um, the right thing to do. They have idea, but they might not know what to do. Yeah, we also offer um, advice and consultation services as well. So usually before testing, we meet um, some of our first uh, users and we trash out what is expected of them and what is supposed to be done. And then we try and prepare and plan for that. So 
Now, with regards to permal vacuum testing, um, the previous um, the previous equipment that were uh, have been shown use liquid nitrogen. We also have um, a test equipment that uses um, thermoelectric modules, and the, we call these um, the Peltier elements. So um, we use these elements for heating and cooling, and we've been able to demonstrate um, testing that is required by the ISO standard. And so we can test up to about minus um, 35 to 40 degrees and up to about 75 to plus 80 degrees. So this doesn't require liquid nitrogen. You just, all that you need is just a regulated DC power supply. And then you just reverse the polarities for heating and cooling. Yeah. So this chamber is, um, is just a chamber and then we put this, um, this thermal system inside covered with a multi-layer insulator to ensure that we don't have heat exchanges between um, the shroud and then also the chamber wall. And this is equipped with a diffusion pump for high vacuum uh, pumping. Yeah. So, and then we also have um, uh, constant temperature bath equipment. So we call them um, despot chambers. Let's say if you have um, solar panels or you have um, you want to do antenna deployment, or let's say you have, um, but you want to do battery screening and you want to cycle them through um, a number of um, cycles. And also if you want to do thermal shock testing, yeah, these um, equipment are capable of doing that. The small um, despatch chamber can achieve uh, between minus 180 and plus 200 degrees C, and the ramping rate is very, very fast. And the large chamber can also achieve um, something similar to that. Now, apart from thermal, we also do a mechanical test. So um, yeah, we, we, uh, we, most of the time we do the dynamic testing. So we, we can also do quasi-static, which is some sign burst. So um, with dynamic testing, uh, with, with a mechanical testing as well too, yes, um, if you want to test, you, 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 you contact us, we discuss the kind of um, requirements that are necessary, and then we, we do that. So let me go ahead and introduce um, our equipment. So our main vibration shaker is capable of um, 28 to about 35 kilonewton excitation force. Uh, frequency range is about 2000 Hertz and then maximum displacement is 60 um, millimeters. And um, we also have um, a shock machine, which is the air bullet type. So this shock machine operates usually, it has a maximum pressure of about 0.35 megapascals. So it has um, a bullet that is, um, this bullet is induced, um, it's, it's, um, um, it makes impact when um, the pressure that is stored here is released. And so the test equipment will be placed on top of this jig and the impact is head beneath this. So I have um, some videos I would like to show. Um, so there, just a moment. <laughs> so this is um, random. Okay, I'd like to go to the next one. So this is a sinus solder. Okay, so you, you at least you have an idea of what we do. And then for the shock uh, machine, uh, just observe, um, So yeah, this is just a single impact, but um, measurements are taken in three dimensions. So we don't have to um, rotate or um, change directions or anything, just one impact and we can get data measurements in all three. Yeah, and then last but not least, um, we also have an outgas, uh, outgas and equipment um, that is um, suitable for ASTM E595 standard. 
So, and then uh, we, like I said before, we are also able to do um, antenna um, compatibility tests. We have an echoic chambers. So that is that. If you have any questions, um, kindly um, let me know. Thank you very much, Dr. Ofuto. Uh, if you have any question, uh, please write in the chat box or raise is your hand button. Uh, if not, uh, we can move to uh, next session. Okay, thank you, Dr. Officer. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next presenter is uh, Professor Naomi uh, from Shizuoka University. Uh, the title is Starts Project in Shizuoka University. Uh, Professor Nomi, uh, can you share your slide? Ah, oh, okay. Can you see? Yes. Uh, thank uh, you very much. Please start. Uh, okay, thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name is Masahiro Nomi uh, in Shizuoka University. Uh, today, I like to introduce uh, six satellites uh, which were developed in Kagawa University and Shizuoka University. So, the next slide. Because uh, I was in Kagawa University uh, and uh, in April 2000, 2014, uh, I moved to Shizuoka University. So, uh, our project uh, was also moved to Shizuoka University. So the, uh, we uh, launched six satellites. And uh, the first and second one, uh, uh, the first and the second satellites were uh, developed in Kagawa, Kagawa University. And uh, the rest, uh, these four, four satellites uh, were developed in Shizuoka University. Uh, and launched. Oh, oh, oh. So please remember, uh, Shizuoka University is here. Uh, here, here is Tokyo, and uh, we, we are in we are in Hamamatsu, and Shizuoka University is in Hamamatsu here. Okay. Okay, this is the first satellite uh, named Star Stars, and nickname is uh, Kukai. Uh, Kukai, uh, his origin <laughs> is uh, in Kagawa, so we uh, named uh, this satellite Kukai. And uh, this satellite was launched by H2A rocket on uh, January 23rd, uh, 2009. And uh, the character, char characteristics uh, of, the, of this satellite uh, are the, these three, three, character, three character, characteristics. The first one, uh, this satellite consists of mother and daughter satellite. And the total mass is uh, eight kilograms. So and the scale uh, is... Uh, about this, uh, 160 and 160 and 400 uh, millimeter. So a little bit uh, larger than CubeSat. And this satellite, uh, I said, uh, this satellite consists of mother and daughter, uh, and these are connected by Tether. So uh, this satellite is, uh, was Tether, uh, satellite and uh, is tether satellite. So uh, the tether length is five meter, and the uh, tether is Kepler uh, Kepler, and uh, also uh, the satellite. Uh, this satellite is robotic satellite. Uh, you you can see the, uh, this picture. Uh, this uh, CG uh, that this is the daughter satellite, and the daughter satellite has a, a robotic arm. And uh, nine months experiment mission uh, was uh, performed. 
and uh, th th this this uh, photograph shows the uh, uh, success of the mission. Uh, the daughter uh, satellite has a camera here, here, camera here. So under the docking condition, this camera cannot uh, take a picture uh, because uh, uh, this surface and this surface is uh, docking. And the, uh, uh, as under the docking condition, uh, <laughs> the picture is black. But the, uh, they are separated. Uh, when they are separated, uh, the, the daughter, uh, daughter, daughter's camera can take a picture of the uh, mother satellite. This is a uh, puddle. This is a puddle, but uh, very white. So because the uh, uh, sunshine is very strong. And then uh, <laughs> after that, uh, we take a picture of the puddle. Uh, maybe clear. <laughs> And uh, the satellite uh, is still alive now, uh, but uh, just tr transmitting uh, CW, CW beacons only. So we can say that uh, almost succeeded, uh, but we couldn't control robotic, con robotic motion, robotic control. So uh, because uh, the tether length uh, was just uh, one meter, uh, maybe, uh, not uh, more than five, more, not not uh, five meters. So uh, in in this uh, mission, uh, we we plan uh, to control the uh, attitude of the daughter satellite by robotic uh, arm uh, by arm link uh, using the tether tension. But the tether is very short. So we couldn't uh, perform a uh, robotic control, but we have a uh, we, we had uh, another chance uh, to do experiment by sounding rocket. Uh, this is not a satellite, but we could we, we could do the uh, we could do the uh, experiment. So you you can see uh, these two figures. <coughs> Here is a uh, robot. Uh, Connected by tether, so uh, we can uh, perform the uh, robotic. Uh, we can perform the attitude. Con I we can we could perform uh, at, uh, attitude control experiment by robotic motion. And this is a uh, second satellite uh, named Star Two. Uh, the nickname is Kenai. <laughs> uh, he he is also in Kagawa. <laughs> so. Uh, this satellite uh, launched by 8 to rocket on uh, February 28, uh, 2014. And uh, uh, this satellite had uh, 300 meter uh, electrodynamic tether, and also a uh, mother and daughter satellite and robotic satellite. So this satellite uh, was already uh, decayed. So uh, you can see uh, the graph of altitude of the satellite. So uh, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven satellites uh, were launched in the same time in the uh, by the eight day rocket. So the uh, first altitude uh, were almost same. So uh, if uh, the tether uh, is not extended, uh, the altitude change is, is along this red dotted line, but uh, uh, tether, uh, but uh, we could succeed to extend the tether. So uh, the altitude change is uh, along this blue dark blue line. So uh, star two uh, was decayed in about two months. So. Uh, <laughs> From this result, uh, we can say uh, the tether uh, was extended for 300 meters, but uh, the satellite uh, didn't work well, so we couldn't uh, get uh, detailed data. So uh, the satellite had, had uh, GPS, or then uh, we calculate uh, the tether length from the GPS data 
uh, we plan to calculate uh, tether length by GPS data, but we couldn't. Okay, from here, uh, we, uh, I moved to Shizuoka University. Then, uh, this is the first satellite uh, developed in uh, Shizuoka University, named Stars C. Uh, the nickname is Hagoromo. Hagoromo uh, is uh, Ham Hamamatsu's uh, traditional story. <laughs> And this satellite uh, was released from the ISS in 2016. So, but, uh, but no, no, uh, this satellite is a, a CubeSat. Uh, so a little bit uh, smaller than the first and the second stars. So uh, we perform, uh, we plan to uh, do a mission uh, of uh, just a the uh, extension, the, just the extension. Uh, so uh, this satellite consists of mother and daughter CubeSat, and uh, it has a hundred meter uh, tether. This is a Kepler tether, and uh, also uh, uh, communication uh, is not good. Uh, was not good in this satellite. Uh, so. Uh, uh, as well, uh, as same as in the start two, uh, we estimate the tether length from the uh, altitude, altitude, altitude change, and uh, we estimate uh, we estimated uh, that the tether length uh, the tether uh, was extended for or maybe seven. Or 80 meters, not a uh, full, full length, uh, 100 meter. And this is a, a second satellite of the, in the Sizuoka University, a fourth satellite uh, in the STARS project named STARS AO. Uh, this is not a tethered satellite. Uh, this satellite uh, uh, was uh, developed. Uh, with amateur community, amateur radio, radio community, uh, amateur astronomical uh, community, and so on. So the mission is that the, uh, uh, sorry, this stars AO has a high resolution camera and high speed transmitters. So uh, we expect uh the uh stars stars <laughs> the name uh, same as the uh, project name a uh, star like this uh, picture uh stars uh, can be taken by uh, the camera and uh it down link uh, with high speed transmission transmission transmitter but uh this this star AO is a also uh, arrive in orbit, but the uh, mission is not performed because uh, software, maybe some troubles in software. But uh, our students uh, are trying to perform a mission now. And this is a uh, uh, start me, uh, this is a uh, uh, satellite. Uh, also, the, this satellite was launched uh, in, uh, in 2018. So uh, this this satellite was released from the ISS, but the uh, the uh, launch date date is near uh, to uh, Start AO. So uh, this satellite uh, is uh, the mission of this satellite was uh, to perform the uh, very very small, very very mini space elevators. So uh, the, uh, this satellite consists of mother and daughter and the grandchildren. <laughs> we, we call grandchildren. Here is a climber. Uh, this yellow yellow very small uh, robot. So at first, tether is extended. And 
uh, and then uh, climber uh, is moving on tether. So this is climber and uh, uh, tether uh, in this uh, mission, uh, tether is a steel convex tape tether uh, major device. So uh, very, very rigid, uh, more rigid uh, tether than uh, the past satellite. So we can receive these uh, CW beacons, but uh, communic uh, antenna is me me uh, antenna was broke, broke antenna antenna function was broke. So uh, we couldn't perform a mission uh, of space elevator. And this is a stars EC. Uh, launched in 2021, uh, so the newest uh, satellite, but uh, deployed in June this year. So uh, this satellite uh, was 3U CubeSat, and this is uh, deployed, deployed from the ISS, and uh, in Stars EC, we could extend the tether. Uh, so, sorry, uh, tether is also a steel convex tape tether. And the tether is extended. Uh, we, we could uh, extend the tether. Like uh, this is a uh, tether length uh, from the data. And we, uh, so you, you can see the uh, tether, tether extension. And also uh, this orange line uh shows that uh we could retrieve a tether so uh this uh start each mission we could uh, success to deploy a tether to deploy to, to extend that uh tether and retrieve a tether uh tether is convex tether okay this is a fi uh, final slide uh we uh, so uh, we launched uh, six satellites, and now uh, we are uh, developing uh, uh, this Start Me Two uh, CubeSat satellite, CubeSat CubeSat. And our goal is uh, to apply these missions uh, to uh, space debris removal and also space elevator. This is a uh, future images. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Nomi. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have any question from floor? Okay. If not, I have one question. Uh, I have never developed this uh, mother-daughter uh, combining type of uh, satellite. How do you think the difference of uh, developing uh, normal one type of CubeSat and uh, this kind of mother-daughter's combining satellite. What is the most different things? Uh... Well, you, for example, just uh, develop two U satellites is the same? Yes, 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 yes. But the uh, docking mechanism is uh, very important because uh, uh, you know uh, under the uh, launch uh, launch condition the uh, two satellites uh, ma must docking but uh, on orbit uh, it should be separated so that, that mechanism is very important and difficult and uh, we have many efforts uh, to docking and separate uh, mechanism Okay, uh, how, what is the separation mechanism? Is there an electrical something or...? Uh, basically, uh, heater cutter. Heater cutter, ah, okay. Yes, yes. So, so the takes length, takes, but, but the uh, nylon line, nylon line is uh, uh, not so long, strong, strong. So... Uh, yeah. Uh, the uh, cube sat in cube sat start she start she and start me uh two cube sat uh, uh 
all also such uh, these are uh, connected uh, uh, by nylon wire but uh, stars the stars and stars two, these two satellites are uh, docked by a nanda a block uh, aluminum block and aluminum block is uh, no, pin pin or uh, pin pin is inserted in the hole and then the, this is uh, this was pulled by nylon wire mm. okay uh, thank you very much maybe it needs a lot of yeah what uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have <laughs> yeah i understand okay from dr rigobert to uh, one question is, uh, what international collaboration are you expecting for this stars project uh today uh we just uh introduce uh, our satellites so uh, yes so uh I, we, we are considering to uh, discuss about the international mission okay uh it's not 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 uh, we, we, we don't uh, uh not not tether satellite is welcome also okay any kind of but but our 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 uh, uh, our uh, universe, uh, our satellite uh, characteristics of our satellite is mechanical uh, me mechanical. So uh, if uh, you 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 consider uh, some dynamic motion or mechanical mission, uh, please contact us. Yes, uh, this. Uh, this type of satellite is very unique for your. Uh, not, not only the uh, motor uh, using motor or some uh, mechanical uh, uh, type of uh, satellite. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you very much. Okay, do we have any other question? If not, we'll move to our next speaker. Thank you very much, Professor Nomi. Thank you. Okay, uh, next talk. Uh, is uh, from Professor Sakamoto of Hokkaido University. Uh, this talk is Introduction of Hokkaido University's Activity. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sakamoto. Uh, please, let's begin. Okay, uh, can you see my slide? Okay, uh, yeah, we can see. Okay, uh, just a moment. Okay, uh, hello, uh, my name is Yuji Sakamoto, Associate Professor from Hokkaido University. So today uh, I talk the introduction to Hokkaido University. So we have a one-stop facility of a vibration test and thermal vacuum chamber. So uh, Hokkaido University is located at Sapporo City uh, in Hokkaido Island. So there are about two million citizens. Uh, it is a big city represents Japan. So uh, this university uh, was originally built in 1876. So we have more than 100 year history. Total students is more than 15,000 inclu including graduate students. And the international students of them is more than 2,000. So it is uh, more than 10%. Total faculties and staffs are more than 4,500. Uh, 4, so th this university is a very large area in one location. So Kaido itself has plenty of natural resources, agriculture and fishery. So next one is... I uh, Space Mission Center, SMC, of Hokkaido University consists of faculty members from a variety of departments, such as engineering, science, agriculture, etc. So the leader is Professor Yukihiro Takahashi. He is the professional of design and test for mission instruments and image data analysis, dedicated for remote sensing, including Earth observation, and the planet deep space. He's from science department. Professor Totani, uh, he is a specialist of thermal 
control design and the test for micro and nano satellite system and the components. He is managing the thermal vacuum chamber system. And me, uh, Sakamoto, is a specialist of design and test for satellite bus system and the components, including structure design, vibration test, and also the, uh, uh, I've experienced the attitude control, communication, power system, etc. I'm managing ground stations and satellite operation systems besides of satellite development. We have developed and operated several mission instruments for remote sensing by 50 centimeter microsatellites. So the variety of 50 centimeter microsatellites are uh, jointly developed with Tokyo University. So uh, the later, uh, after my talk, the, there is an introduction of the Tokyo University. Uh, the one is high precision telescope. This is HPT. It has two meter to five meter GSD. The re resolution is depending on the orbital height. And the second one is this one, uh, Spaceborne Multispectral Imager, SMI. This has um, 650 selectable wavelengths. So we, we can monitor such as agriculture, uh, fishery, and the cloud conditions uh, by variety of wavelengths. The image data can be used for a lot of more applications. These instruments are being used for Philippines microsatellite Diota 2. Right top uh, photo shows the satellite Diota 2 flight model. Uh, this is developed for uh, Philippines. So uh, it was finished uh, four years ago, uh, but uh, about 10 Filipino students stayed in Hokkaido and they experienced the town vacuum chamber test in Space Mission Center. We can also assemble the microsatellite and the CubeSat and carry out the electrical test in this uh, de development loop. We have lots of experience about the ground station and the satellite operations, as well as satellite development. Hokkaido University has a ground receiving station in Sweden. In addition to uh, Hakodate, this is also uh, belong, to, belong to Hokkaido University. And uh, Sendai GRS, uh, this is owned by Tokyo University. So all the ground stations are being managed by satellite management system. Uh, this is the web service system. So they have a different hardware and operation procedure, but we can use and schedule the operations seamlessly through this web service system. Vibration test facility is available nearby university campus. So it is located in five minute walk from Space Mission Center, but this is owned by the different organization. Left photo shows the uh, vibration test for 50 kilogram dummy mass satellites. So after this uh, rehearsal, uh, we had uh, actually carried out for 50 centimeter microsatellite engineering model. It was finished in April this year. And the uh, uh, right figure shows that uh, this is our latest project, 3U CubeSat. Hoxing one. So this is jointly uh, developed with Muroran Institute of Technology and the Tokyo University in Japan. First structure uh, thermal model was tested in last week. So we have prepared this new uh, CubeSat vibration jig and this was successfully finished. Oh, sorry. In final slide, uh, I summarized the items required to achieve the satellite uh, operations. So uh, we need to develop not only the satellite, but also we need to prepare ground station and operation strategy. We have uh, the satellite development class uh, for graduate students and uh, frequently we carry out 
the uh, uh, special seminars and discussions for satellite team members. Before the actual assembly of satellite uh, and the test, we need to make the uh, documents, uh, design documents for mission and bus system, including thermal and structure analysis using the uh, special softwares. And also we need to prepare the mission plan and operation procedures strategy for the uh, satellite computer software design, including attitude determination and control. In Space Mission Center, we can assemble and carry out the electrical tests for microsatellites and uh, CubeSats, and carry out the thermal vacuum chamber test and the vibration test. And we can also support the preparation for ground station system in your country. So in Philippines project, uh, we uh, collaborated, uh, we cooperated the, uh, install the ground station in Philippines. After the launch, uh, we need to carry out the satellite operations day by day, and we need to review the flight data. Also the maintenance of ground station is required. So we have uh, lots of experience and we can continue to support them. Uh, this is final slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sakamoto. Okay. Uh, is there any question from the floor? Uh, Okay, if not, I have some questions. Uh, your satellite is mainly focused on Earth observation mission, or do you have any, some other trial through your satellite series? I think that, uh, yes, we, we can develop uh, every type of satellite, every missions, but uh, 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 we are very good at the uh, development of 50 centimeter microsatellite dedicated for Earth observation. So, oh, but it is not only one uh, selection. So, I, I mean that uh, our experiences for can be used for the, any type of satellites. Okay, thank you. I, I think that our yes, the, our good point is the ground station and operation system. So, this was uh, accumulate these experiences was accumulated uh, through the operation of Earth observation satellites. So be, be, because the remote sensing satellite uh, needs to be operated every day. So every day we need to make a procedure and every day we need to get the observation data. So this is the different point for from the uh, just the engineering demonstration satellite. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why you are fo I mean, focusing on the operation systems. Okay, and one question is from uh, Dr. Hesas. Uh, about the multi-spectral measure, have you considered to use the SMI in CubeSat? Mm, it is a good question. So I think that, I guess the downside is required, but the, the possibly uh, three U uh, space will be required only for the payload. So the other uh, bus system is also necessary. So I, I think the six U is the minimum selection mm. if, if we want to use it for the cube set. Uh, minimum six uh, U. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Do we have any question? If not, uh, let's move to uh, next session. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sakamoto. Okay, next session is uh, talked by uh, Professor Fujita from Tohoku University. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fujita. Uh, Can you see time. my answer? Can you see my screen? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you much. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, I'm Shinya Fujita from Tohoku University. Today, I'd like to introduce satellite development project in our space robotics laboratory. 
Tohoku University is a Japanese national university located in Sendai city here and established in uh, 1900, more than 100 years ago. The Space and Robotics Laboratory, SRL, is a lab belongs to the engineering department of Tohoku University and these are staff members. And we are, and we are studying robotic system for space science exploration missions such as free flying space robots, robotic system on ISS, planetary exploration rovers and asteroid sampling. Uh, to make these research outcomes happen in the real world, we started to develop micro, micro and nano satellites more than 15 years ago. In this presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about multi-spectral Earth observation. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about three research topics currently we are focusing on, which is multi-spectral Earth observation on orbit, artificial meteor project, deep space, deep space mic, uh, micro probes. Something is wrong, sorry. Can you see my, see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, before going to the main topic, let me introduce our history. These are the satellites developed in our laboratory. Since 2009, we have launched 12 satellites. So we can say we are launching one satellite per year on average. Also, we have three ongoing satellite projects. As you can see, half of these are designed to observe Earth. So we have three of them and all of these are 50 kilogram class. This graph shows the relationship between the ground resolution and number of observation bands for Earth observation satellite. In these days, severe delays to develop high resolution and few bands Earth observation satellites are ongoing worldwide. However, we believe that it is difficult to achieve reliable vegetation analysis for agriculture and forestry with such development observations. So we are developing uh, satellites with higher resolution and multi-spectral observation of 600 bands or, or more. So for that purpose, Hokkaido University and we had developed High Resolution Telescope, HPT. This is an example of a picture taken by one of our satellites. Light field near Sendai are taken and we can see narrow footpaths between light field. We take high resolution pictures images, high resolution images, we adopt step stair observation method. The advantage of this method is long exposure time, so it can obtain detailed images without a blur. Through so this on-orbit experiment experience, we are improving attitude control technology. Using this technology, we got through uh, uh, technology we got through Earth observation satellite. We are supporting on-orbit artificial shooting star project. Sky Canvas project is a project operated, operated by our Tokyo-based startup company, AIL, and it aims to create artificial shooting stars at desired location and desired time using microsatellite. So far, we already launched two satellites, L1 and L2 for technology demonstration. So this project, we believe we can unite space entertainment and space science. That being said, to make this project successful, we need reliable satellite bus system for precision shooting star trajectory control. 
To solve that problem, what SRL developed for L satellite cities is double fail-safe satellite IT control system shown in this diagram. Oh, active sensors, computers are triply redundant. So if any combination of two breakdowns happen in happens simultaneously, the onboard computers can immediately abort pellet releasing. We believe this is the first microsatellite which applied this kind of double fail safe system design. Our research interests are not only towards Earth observation application. After the completion of the Lunar Orbital Platform, platform Gateway as a part of Altmet, uh, United States Altmet Altimus program, we believe launch opportunities to go lunar region will increase significantly. In that world, university can get a chance to reach lunar and beyond. Since SRL has been studying lunar rovers for exploring polar region over many years, it is reasonable to prepare spacecraft to support communication between the rovers and ground stations. Uh, therefore, uh, SIL, Hokkaido University, and Murang Institute of Technology started Hokushin project. Our first step is Hokushin 1, which is a 3U CubeSat designed to demonstrate three, ele three elemental technology in low Earth orbit. Uh, first, deep space lensing is a technology to determine orbit of the spacecraft using uh, spacecraft using our new asynchronous one-way lensing method, we can measure the distance of 400,000 kilometers with a small antenna. In lunar region, we need thrusters to control both attitude and orbit. In Hakshin One, we demonstrate orbit control capability using this newly developed one new side thruster unit. Also, we need more power to establish data link between lunar rovers. So we are developing the deployable solar panels, uh, which has best in class size. These are our future projects. After Hokshin 1, we will move on to Hokshin 2, which is a data relay spacecraft orbiting moons more near orbit. After we after that, we will try 50 kilogram plus lunar orbiter, which can carry scientific observation instruments. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fujita. Uh, okay, uh, if you have any question, uh, please write in the chat box. Uh, if not, I have some question. Uh, I think uh, you, are, you mentioned the uh, you know, observation uh, satellite process as, like you said, the step stair observation. Step stair uh, yes. Yeah, this, system is very, looks very interesting, but how can this satellite uh, find the target position? Is this processing on orbit or just uh, pre-recorded in the orbit, uh, in satellites in, before the operation? How can satellite fi find the target? Uh, when we do this operation, we send the command to uh, define target position and the satellite can calculate how to how to control its attitude. Okay, so it means that you send command beforehand to the operation yes. and the yes. target position is already recorded in the orbit. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. And the uh, second question is a little bit different topic. You uh, are cooperating with the Japanese company Air, and yes. uh, you, uh, 
adapt a double fail safe system. Yes. Uh, and uh, why this satellite need a, a double fail uh, uh. system? Be because uh, I think uh, if company want to, uh, if company develop a satellite, they want to reduce the cost. Hmm. Of course, that is a good question. Yeah. Uh, it is not for mission success. It is for uh, safety reason. Uh, safety reason. Uh, uh, because uh, because the, the particle of the shooting star is very tiny. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the size is, is one centimeter diameter. So we cannot uh, observe the released uh, shooting star by ground later system. So we cannot determine its orbit after we shoot the star. So we have to avoid the avoid the collision uh -huh. with shooting star and other uh, spacecraft, especially uh, ISS or uh, visiting Beagle. So we have to. We are uh, we are told we are requested to uh, uh, to keep very uh, safe <laughs> attitude control system. Oh. So, so we have to develop this type of uh, double phase system. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Uh, you have to do it. Uh, but but yes. it, it's because of some international law, uh, some deployer. Uh, uh, the original, uh, this, these requests are, came from originally from JAXA. Uh, JAX, um, I, I'm not sure uh, the uh, the reason. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe it's because Japanese uh, space law or something. Yes, some yes. regulation is. Uh, I see. Thank you much. Uh, one question from in chat box from Kishimoto san. Uh, she wants to know the uh, determination method. Uh, focusing one satellite for uh, the ranging system. Uh, it is very difficult to explain here, <laughs> but uh, it uh, uh, the the idea itself is uh, uh, same with GPS system, but uh, oh, mm, both both ground station and spacecraft works as uh, uh, G one of uh, GPS, GNSS satellite, and, and also it can be a GNS, GPS receiver. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, we have to discuss later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, do we have any question? Okay, uh, if not, uh, we'll finish a uh, session for uh, Professor Fujita. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, lastly, uh, let's uh, have a Q and A session. Any topics is okay for today's uh, webinar. If do you have any question, uh, you can raise a hand or uh, in a chat box. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, if not, we will conclude uh, today's session. Uh, okay. Uh, lastly, I would like to introduce you. Uh, there is a, a, a JCube website uh, in a UNICEF homepage. Uh, there are some information and. Uh, as Professor Cho uh, introduced you, uh, there is uh, some video introducing uh, uh, just JCube one webinar, uh, a first JCube webinar. It's also uh, 
you can watch the website. And also, if you have any question, uh, you can send a question to uh, uh, JCAP office in the UNICEF. And always welcome to have uh, your question. OK. Uh, if do you have no any more question, let's conclude today's uh, second JCAP webinar. Uh, thank you very much for uh, participation in today's webinar. Uh, um, Japanese, all Japanese universities are welcome to uh, have a collaboration activity with uh, international partners. Okay, thank you very much. Let's finish today's webinar.